Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 35. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord has commanded. Now, let's get to the point here. Let's see what the Bible says. He gathers all the children of Israel together and he speaks. No one else is speaking. It's got to be loud. And said unto them, These are the words which the Lord has commanded. They're God's words. That ye should do them. Now look at the should. We're under the law, and Moses says, You're not obligated to do it. You should do it. But if you don't, we know the consequences. You'll die and go to hell. That's the same plan of salvation that we have today in the church age. You must be born again and yet it's an option it's the free will in the law and in under grace must be born again listen you want to do it God's way you want to get to heaven you must be born again believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved now you got the choice you can do that or you don't have to do that as far as what I'm setting before you now it's written down now. It's no more oral. And what I'm going to quote to you in Exodus and Leviticus, you don't have to do it. Now what we're going to talk about in this chapter is giving, offering, to build a tabernacle. You got it? You want to give it? Glory to God. Six days shall work be done. They blew this one. But on the seventh, there shall be to you a holy day. Now let's run back to verse 1 again. And Moses gathered all the congregation, the children of the church together, and said unto them, These are, wait a minute. That's not what it says, does it? It says, Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together, and six days shall work be done. But on the seventh day there shall be to you, Jews, Israel, a holy day, a Sabbath, Jewish, of rest to the Lord Jehovah. Whosoever doeth any work therein shall be put to death. That is not practiced by your churches today. Oh, you know, we're Aventus. We honor the Sabbath day. There's a church out there, and I won't give you the name, but there's a church out there, because I don't know the name, but I, I've heard this from reliable sources, that believe that we are following the Antichrist when we don't keep the Sabbath and do churches on Sunday. I have that church in mind, but I'm not going to say it because I'm not 100% sure. That we're following the Antichrist. A Sabbath of rest to the Lord Whosoever does work therein shall be put to death. Capital punishment for doing work on a Sunday. A Saturday, excuse me. Boy, you would blow America. America is 24-7. Saturday or Sunday. I grew up in a time that both Saturday and Sunday, that was it. That was a day. There was rest. I grew up in a time, I think after 6 o'clock, everything would be closed. I'd be sitting on my, on my grandma's, uh, she had a patio there, along 95, when it was two two lanes of highway north and two lanes of highway south. And 
you you would hear a car on a Sunday. Pshum. Pshum. It used to be peaceful. Stores weren't open 24-7. Now they're going away from that because they're not making money at, at 3 o'clock in the morning. But, and Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Uh-oh, talking about offering, talking about money. Whosoever is a willing heart. Now you run that back over to Corinthians. God loves a cheerful giver. God doesn't want force. God doesn't. All right, we're not going to start the service until we see money put in that plate. Oh, please give money to. Because if you don't give us money, our radio station is going to close down. We won't be able to do this anymore. That's not willing. God wants a willing offering. Oh, please, can't we have people come out? Can't we have people do this? Can't you people give a little time for yourself? Can't you do this? God says, don't, don't plead. Don't beg them. Because if they do come out, that's not willing. That's by force. This altar call, we're going to sing three more stanzas. Give it up. They didn't walk the altar on their own. And you make them, and then they do say this prayer, and they do get, you made them. You got to come to God and say, God, I don't know what you want me to do. I have no idea. You tell me what to do, and you help me. I'll do it. Going all the world and preach the gospel? Let's go. Let's, let's go. Now, there'll be times, you know, you're, you're tired. You don't feel well. Your flesh is going to fight you. The biggest, the biggest problem you're going to have is your flesh. It'd be like, stop this. Stop it. Let him bring it. An offering of the Lord. Gold and silver and brass among slaves, we talked about. And we've already going to talk about this from Exodus 25. Where we went over this. Blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat hair. And ram skins dyed red and badger skin and shittim wood. I got I got fox. I don't want that. I got copper. It's not in the list. And oil for the lamp light. And spices and for anointing oil and for the sweet incense. And ox stones and stones to be set in the ephah and for the breastplate. And every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. God's going to lay on their hearts. We got to get this done. The Holy Spirit is going to speak and say, listen. And then you have the option. You can say yes or you can say no. And if you do yet, wise, wisdom, the tabernacle, oh boy, already get in trouble, his tent. You realize that word his, that male article, is making people all upset all over the world. Because you can't distinguish between a male and a female. Anybody has the right to, to use any restroom, whatever sex they believe they are, even though they can't tell what sex they are. And God nails it down, and if it hasn't been changed, it will be changed in new modern Bibles. They will remove that hiss. There are Bibles out there that will make God a neuter. He's neither male or he's neither female. They're out there. And his covering, his taches, his boards, his bars, his pillars, and his sockets. All right, that's all the that's all the tabernacle items. The ark and the staves thereof carries the ark, and with the mercy seat and the veil, the covering. Now that's that veil that Jesus ran. Note how it is put as an article that belongs to the ark. 
in the mercy seat. Now, why is that? When Jesus ripped that veil, I, I go right in and say, Hey, Lord, how you doing? I got a prayer request. I want to thank you. Lord, can you bless these ministries? Lord, can you help this person? Bible says, I, I believe it's Hebrews, I am seated in heavenly places. Wait a minute. There's no chairs in this place. Isn't it amazing Eli found, found a place to sit in the, tabern in the tabernacle and you don't find no chairs but God's seat? And Jesus speaks to, to the Pharisees and all that. He's speaking to, to the people of Israel and he says something that's quite weird. Moses' seat. From Genesis to Numbers, Deuteronomy, even unto Joshua who, overdone, who overtakes Moses in the work. Have you ever found a Moses' seat? And there is no seat in this holy place of most holy. It's in uh, one of the gospel. He mentions to him about Moses' seat. And, and when we say you are seated in heavenly place, that's not you go sit down. That is your position. It's a place that has your name on it. So the veil that Jesus rent here is tied right to the ark. And let's see. The table and his staves and all his vessels, there's plates, spoons, and the showbread. So even when you're in transit, there is bread on that table. The candlestick also for the light. And his furniture. Furniture? The snuffers, the sniffers, the is considered as furniture. And his lamps with the oil for the light. The incense altar and his stage and the anointing oil and the sweet incense. Sweet, sweet to God. We're going to read about this over again, too. So, the hanging for the door, the entering of the tabernacle, that's the outer veil. That's the veil that the children of Israel can see if they, if they look in. The altar of burnt offering. That's the brazen offer. His brazen gate. Great. His stave and all his vessels. The labor and his foot. So the labor is a two-piece. The hangings of the court. That's outside the tabernacle. His pillars. All the pillars that hold it up. Their sockets. And the hangings at the door of the court. That's the outside. That's where the, the children of Israel come up to now, if you ever put a tent together, you know what you do, those little poles. There they are. The pins for the tabernacle and the pins of the court and their cords. And the cloths for service to do service in the holy place. The holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Said, Goodbye. It almost looks like a, where did they go? You know, it was rose red. And they came. Everyone whose heart stirred them up. Their conscience. And notice it says heart, not head. Salvation and service of God is always heart. And everyone who's his spirit. Now that's not the Holy Spirit. That's the spirit inside you. Of them. Now watch the word that shows up in Corinthians. Made willing. The free will some could. And some may not have been given. I guarantee not all Israel gave. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and all his service and for the holy garments. So let's look at 2 Corinthians 9 7 now. And let's see what it said. 
2 Corinthians 9, 7. Let's see what Paul says. That you saw in the law. And in the law there is a free will. That find in the church a 2 Corinthians 9, 7. We'll start in verse 6. And Paul speaking to Christians, not under the law. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And that would go as far as money and as far as the ministry. You put one gospel track a year, don't expect 200 million people at the end of the year. And he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. You give five dollars to a missionary on the field, and you have no idea what that five dollars will come back as. Every man according as he purpose in there's the heart. See the heart, never brain, never thoughts, never head. So let him give. God lays on the Christian not 10%. You run the Malachi, that's under the law. What you want to say, Lord God, I'm, I have set in my heart to give you this. I'd be advised, they'll you be above the 10%. Because God has done so much more for us than what he did in the Old Testament. He suffered and died and bled for us. But what your heart says, so let him give, not grudgingly. The church always wants money for me. Or necessity. Well, if I put it on IRS form line number 46, whatever it is. Or, I, I heard people, and this is so funny, and this is not money, but I have heard the testimony of some people that in churches, out their mouth, that service would not end if somebody came up the altar and made some kind of professional faith. And that as a teenager, they would get with their teenager friends and say, well, one of us will go up this week. Just so we can get this service. I, listen, I've heard that out of people's ears. And they knew with their heart that they weren't doing right. But just to end the service. Because that guy would not send anybody home. Until somebody came to the altar that evening. Or morning. Or whatever the service was. That's foolish. I have heard people say to me. That they've been in churches where they had the dollar dance. And the ten dollar dance. And the twenty dollar dance. And they get all the way up to a hundred. Just so that one guy could say, oh, I outgave everybody in the church. Oh, please give me money. Oh, please give me. Will you spend some time to come out with us so we can do this? Oh, please. There hasn't been many month people doing it. We're running funds and we're not getting enough. That's necessary. As someone leading to necessary, God says, I don't want it. For God loveth a cheerful giver. When you have a, a man who comes to your church, he's a missionary, and your heart falls for him, and you reach in your pocket, and you don't even count what's going in your hand. You reach in your pocket, you grab the money, and you put it in the plate, and you say, Lord, God, may that guy use it. That's cheerful. And we can just stop right there. The rest of it is, you know, it's studying the giving and all that, but that's, that's, that's the main foundation of giving. Do it cheerfully, do it without being harassed to do it, and God will bless you. Now, in Acts chapter 5, verse 1, here's a husband and wife. The entire church is selling their goods. And they're bringing the money and they're laying it at the apostles' feet. I forget their name. But they come up, the husband comes up first and here's the money. And Peter catches right on. He goes, uh, is that all the money? Well, yeah. You're lying to God and the Holy Spirit. And it's not that they didn't give all the money. That's not the point of the Acts chapter 5. Is they lied to God, the Holy Spirit. Say what you give, don't overblow it. Now again, I have, I have seen, or been witness to, yeah, and if I so here, somebody will take an envelope, an offering envelope and put it in the in the collection plate and it's empty but when people look around oh look at that he gave money 
That's in Acts chapter 5, verse 1. Say, listen, come, this is not all of it. This is partial what we saw. We only got half the faith. But that's what we want to give to you, to God. And they came both men and women, as many as were willing hearted. So, in this chapter, heart, verse 5, heart, verse 10, heart, verse 21, 22 heart, 25 heart, twice, 29 heart, 34 heart, 35 heart. And we'll get into hearts in the next chapter. See, how do you know a person is saved? When they gave from the heart, Romans chapter 10. How do you know God is well pleased with me? How, why is, is the motive of what you've done? Is it in your heart or is it because someone's looking? And I believe when you give for the status of the IRS, it's not heart. It's to write down that number for the government. I even had a preacher tell me one time, he came up to me and goes, well, you know, you ought to claim that on your ass. I said, no, I don't. I'm sorry. But it tells the government that you're a giver to the church. Isn't that like bragging? God don't want anybody to brag. And brought bracelets and earrings. Oh, there's those earrings again. And rings and tablets. That's not the computer tablet. Okay. You, you got to explain things today to people. Oh, they have tablets back then? Churches have tablets, and sometimes they're annoying. I had to say that. All jewels of gold and every man that offered, offered. Every man that offered, offered. An offering. Offered, offering, an offering. Try to say that four times. Offered, offering, an offering. Of gold unto the Lord. Sometimes the English of the King James Bible upsets English teachers. I love it. And every man with whom was found blue. You get that? Every man that had blue. Every man that had purple. Every man that had scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. And ram skin of uh, red skins of rams. And badger skins brought them. These people are seriously serving the Lord. They just get messed up. Every one that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought the Lord's offering. And every man with whom was found shittim wood for the work of the service brought it. So there is shittim wood and they're carrying it. I don't think they're carrying a tree. Now shittim wood had to have been something maybe cabin tree or they just carried a place. I don't know. But there it is. They're in the middle of a wilderness. It's not go over and get that tree and get and get a chainsaw and cut it down. And all the women that were wise hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and purple and scarlet and of fine linen. And all the women whose heart stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. They knew how to work with goat's hair. They knew how to work with uh, yarn. They knew how to work with fine linen. They did what was in their heart, what God has gifted them. And the ability of the knowledge and wisdom, they did it for the understanding of God. And the rulers brought onyx stones. And stones to be set in the ephah and for the breastplate. And spice and oil for the lamps. And for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a willing offering. Look how the Holy Spirit is recorded. They wanted to do it. Unto the Lord. Every man and woman. Whose heart made them willing to bring all the man and work. And that's what you see Paul quote in 2 Corinthians 9. In the Corinthians. This is found in Exodus. Now I don't know if he's speaking about and thinking about Exodus. Remember Paul was well versed in the, in the Old Testament. He knew his Old Testament. 
And he may, I don't know, he may have Exodus 35 in mind when he's quoting like that. As these Jews are giving to God, they're giving that we want to give it. And you'll see in a later chapter how willing it happens. The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring all manner of work, when the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. And Moses said to the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel. I know every time I read that name, it's probably pronounced a different way, but Lord forgive me. For the son of Uriah, there are some Christians in there, we read what we read. The son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. All right, that's where the Lord Jesus Christ comes from. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God. Here is a man in the Old Testament filled by the Holy Spirit. He's going to touch and manage the holiest, holiest things. And wisdom and understanding and knowledge. There the three are again. And all manner of workmanship. We read in previous in, that, in Exodus 31. He's a goldsmith. He's a silversmith. He's a carpenter. He's a seamstress. He's everything jack of all trades. I got 1 Peter 1 11. Let's see what that one is here. 1 Peter 1 11. We got nice and big, so it's got to be something. 1 Peter 1 11. Searching what? Of what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, the prophets, verse 10, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And what it's talking about is the Holy Spirit did come into men in the Old Testament for the for the purpose of seeking forth, verse 10. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. And he's talking about the sufferings of Christ. So what is it that Basilio is given the Spirit of God to show us about Christ? Everything in this tabernacle, everything that we just read and more, has all sufficientness. To speak of Christ and his suffering and his ministry. The ark, the, the, the mercy seat, the labor, the, the brazen altar, the, the curtains. All show us in many ways Jesus Christ. And they don't even know. To devise courteous works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass. He's a jack of all trades from God. And a cutting of stones to set them. And a carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. Again, cunning is excellent workmanship, the best for God. And he put, wait a and he had put in his heart. That he may teach. So he's going to show other Israelites how to do this work so the work can be done. They don't know. And when you work in the ministry, you have been filled with the Spirit of God of salvation. It is your job to train other Christians, to teach other Christians to do the service of God that is needed. Take that, that new Christian out and say, hey, we're going to stand right here. We're going to go into a, a store. We're going to buy a soda. And what I want you to do is I want you to take this gospel track. And when you pay it and they give you the receipt, I want you to give that gospel track to them. I want you to stand right here in the street corner and offer to anybody that crosses this street a gospel track. I want you to carry gospel tracks. Keep them in your pocket. Read those gospel tracks. Know that there's all different types of gospel tracks. For all kinds of different situations. Train them. Teach them. 
Tell, say, listen, here's a good memory verse you, you should learn. Let me know next week if you learned it. Teach them. They're not going to learn on their own. Both he and Aholiab, the son of Eshemesh, Ashi, it wrong, of the tribe of Dan. We talked about this before. We've got the tribe where Jesus Christ comes out of, and we got the tribe that looks like the Antichrist is associated with. That's interesting. What? I don't know. But, ooh, ooh. Them hath he God filled with the wisdom of the heart. To work all manner of work and engraver, and other cunning workmen, of the embroiderer, hand. Not done by machine. We go. We can go to the mall and watch a guy do it by machine. That's interesting. That's wonderful to watch. But these are people who are doing it with with whatever they do by hand, in blue and in purple and in scarlet and fine linen and all the weaver. That's the first time that word comes up when we're talking about the tabernacle. There's weaver. I believe that's the first time that word shows up in the Bible. Weaver. What's a weaver have to do with? He has to do with the work of God. You ever go to any of these places where they show you old homes, how they did things way back when? Well, they're very interesting. There's one in Sturbert Village, Massachusetts. There's one in Mystic, Connecticut. And if you come across somebody who's pretending to be a weaver, say, hey, where was the first weaver in the Bible? What did he make? He helped make the tabernacle. What's the tabernacle? That's where God's going to bold for the children of Israel. Even of them that do any work, and of those that devise cunning work, the greatest work. And God, listen, God ain't going to name them all by one, but he acknowledges in the chapter all these people. And they will be acknowledged when it comes to their time of judgment. If they go into, into heaven, the, 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 the new earth, at that time they will receive what they've done, whatever they've done here. They'll be acknowledged then. There's plenty of people in the, in the New Testament that have done things for Paul, for Peter, for the church, and they're not named. Some are, some aren't. I support missionaries. There are people in Poland today that, that we support as a missionary. And I'm not bragging. It's to say they have no idea who my name is and what I am, where I am, or anything about my family. Oh, but when they get the glory and they find out that at the at the judgment seat of Christ that missionaries I support, then people, hey, that's one of the guys that helped us. Keep serving the Lord and let Him take care of you.